Okay, I'm joined now by Alyssa Rowe, formerly Alyssa Mills, uh, class of 2017 for Lynchburg Field Hockey. And uh, first of all, Alyssa, how the heck are you? I am doing great, given all the circumstances we're under right now. But, you know, I, like I said, the sun is shining and just counting all my blessings right now. So. Amen to that. That is a perfect attitude uh, for where <laughs> we are. Um, and currently, where you are, I guess that's the kitchen behind you? Um, I'm in like a little dining room, but it's all one room. So yeah, kitchen, dining room, you know, the whole works here in Richmond. <laughs> <laughs> that That is becoming a uh, part of our new line of questioning is where are you? What is it, <laughs> why is that behind you? Stuff like that uh, right now. Let, let me let me go directly into current events. Perfect. Uh, obviously, obviously, we are doing this interview in this way for a purpose. And you as a teacher have had to navigate these waters a little bit differently than say the students that we have had on the podcast or even our uh, coaches and that you have to still keep some form of a classroom going during all of this. And to add to that, at least in my opinion, extra tough because you teach kindergartners. So how in the world are you keeping them engaged and focused in times like this? It is definitely just a whole, just, it's just a weird time that we're in, but I think it's really all about perspective and, you know, just being able to step into someone else's shoes. Um, so like you said, I am a kindergarten teacher. So most of my kids are um, between five and six years old, a couple of seven year olds. Um, so they are just teeny tiny. They were in the middle of reading and um, I actually teach at a Title I school. So that means, you know, most of our students are on free or reduced lunch. Um, they get extra supports from the government and things like that. Um, I personally is a huge piece of my heart, especially working in Title I school, because the, for my kids, you know, school is, um, school is their safe place. School is where they love to be. So them not being able to be there, it's like really traumatic for them. So I'm just trying to keep things more normal. I make like seven videos a day or so just little you know five minute reading stories to them doing writing pieces with them showing them games that we learned in the classroom and how that can be used at home using um, household materials like forks or apples or um, sticky notes or just kind of whatever they have laying around just trying to give them some sort of normal we actually are doing a lot of online virtual things. So we do, um, I did like a Google Hangout with my class last night and it was just so cool just to see them interacting with each other and just like the love that they had in their hearts to be able to even see their friends, see their teachers because we had such an abrupt stop that none of us really got that closure to, um, you know, kind of say our goodbyes. So you know, it's a it's a pretty traumatic thing, but also I'm just trying to show them that, you know, this is this is just sometimes how life is and how do you handle the situations that you're put in. So, you know, like we do just trying to keep it light and fun and just as normal as possible in a way. Have there been has there been anything that has popped up that you felt more prepared for than, you know, maybe you think you might have been if you hadn't had the experience as an athlete under, you know, such people like Coach Enza Steele and, and Jenny Smith, now Jenny Relaford. You know, can you take me through a little bit of what your time at Lynchburg has helped you be more prepared than maybe you would have been otherwise? It's actually really funny because I talk about my time at Lynchburg frequently at school. Um, outside of athletics like honestly I feel that the Lynchburg Education Department has outdone themselves I've never felt more prepared and um, just at peace with being a teacher I felt like the Education Department was phenomenal in just getting their students equipped so I would love to shout them out um, and all the professors there I'd also like to approach your question like pre-quarantine and post-quarantine so pre-quarantine um, Coach Deal sets very high expectations. I think we all know that. And that is something that I've carried with me for since I've been gone. Um, Pre-quarantine, I kind of approached my school as 
I want to be the best because that's how Coach Steele coaches us. She coaches us to be the best. And um, so as an athlete, what is the highest thing you can do? Well, you can be an all-conference player. You can be an all-state player. You can be an all-American. You can be a national champion. So, like, those are the stepping stools to kind of lay your athletic career out on. Like, where do you want to be at the end of your time? Um, in terms of school, you know, I could be teacher of the year. You could be a national blue ribbon school. So my goal is to make my school the best it can be because I want it to receive those accolades. Just like winning an ODAC championship was such a special moment. I can only imagine like what doing something like a championship for my school would be. Like, I just think that lights my heart on fire and it makes me so excited to be in the education field right now. Um, Post quarantine, I still set those high expectations. My kids might be five and six, but I have a very structured classroom and my kids know my expectations, you know, just tweaking them a little bit for more age appropriate things. Um, you know, just we have fun, but also if you walk into my classroom, you know, my students are engaged, you know, that they are learning and that they are loving learning. Like those are really important to me. And I feel like Coach Steele really put that in like, you're here to play hockey. You're here because you love hockey, and we are here to make you the best hockey player you can. And I really feel like bringing Jenny in. Um, she came in my sophomore year, I believe. Yep. Um, you know, she just, like, lifted that up even higher. So I I just – high expectations that were set on me in Lynchburg, I just hold them so near and dear to my heart because I just feel like that's how you elevate yourself and the people around you to the next level. Our – all of our athletes – not just our seniors, but all of our athletes are in a really odd position and, and not being able to play out the spring season. N none of nobody else has been in this position before, not even fall athletes or winter athletes of this year. But if you were, if you had a platform, if you were on a panel and you had a chance to give them a message, uh, some type of advice to get through this time and kind of maybe even think forward, you know, that this will end and you know, things of that nature. What could that be for you? I know it's so cliche, but really just um, taking the time to process the moment that you're in because you never know when it's going to be over. And that's like really hard. And I think it's different too, because, you know, it's not just seniors that were affected. And I think that's what a lot of people outside of athletics want to focus on. It's like, oh, the seniors are done and that is awful and terrible. But you know what? That group of sophomores will never get to play with that exact team again. And I think that's something like the, again, the whole bigger perspective of it is it's not just seniors. It is everybody that's being affected. And my heart goes out to so many coaches and athletes. Um, I coach field hockey here in Richmond and, you know, our spring season got shut down. So all of my middle school girls are like, Oh, I'm, I don't understand. And it's, it, it's really hard. It's a hard thing to process. I just think if you ever do get one more chance to go back on the field to the underclassmen, go all out, just go all out and do it for the people that didn't get to hold that close to your heart for the seniors that did. I really encourage them to give back to that sport give another child the chance that you didn't get to finish on. And mm -hmm. that is going to have so much more of a lasting effect than, you know, that one senior year. And I think in this moment, it really hurts. But 10 years from now, you're going to look back and be like, I changed a kid's life because I gave back that time. So that is my advice for them. Those are perfect words. <laughs> uh, I am I am glad we talked to you, you, you this week. And you are in the season that you're in because those are those are very uh, mature thoughts to be make sure just people, you know, kind of remind them of the current situation that it's not over. You still have a chance to be impactful. And here's how you can how you should be thinking about it, and how you can do it. So um, thank you so much for uh, the kind of last minute request from me this morning. To hop on here. Um, one thing we all do have now is time. So that's certainly uh, helped out. But again, thank you so much for everything that you're doing currently, especially with your kindergartners. And, you know, you are teaching the future of America. So we certainly appreciate your efforts on that. Yes, this is a very much a full circle moment for me, too, because when you first came to Lynchburg, I was your first interview. So when you asked, I was like, absolutely, I'll do anything for Joe. And, you know, you and Daniel are best friends anyway. So I'll do anything for y'all and for Lynchburg. So oh, 
That's, uh, that's fantastic. I almost thought <laughs> about that. But yeah, you, I think you even had, no, you had blonde hair then, but it was like your freshman I year. I know. You red hair, I think, yeah, right? Yeah, I did have red hair. That was a phase too, but you know, neither here nor there. As well. Guys, I'm not in that season of life anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, ma'am. All right, Alyssa, uh, thank you so much. Keep crushing life, and we'll be in touch soon. All right. Thank you, Joe.